Hello, my name is Alex Dowling. I'm an assistant professor at the University of Notre Dame. Today I'll be talking about how to make money in energy markets, um, specifically how to use probabilistic forecasting and stochastic programming to optimize participation of energy systems or resources in uh, wholesale markets, and also to understand the interaction between resources and said markets. This is joint work uh, with Xi'an Gao, my graduate student, and is part of the Institute for the Design of Advanced Energy Systems. Electric markets in the US uh, have decisions that span 12 orders of magnitude from kind of control decisions at the millisecond scale all the way to investment decisions at the decade scale. Um, and as part of the IDEAS project, we want to be able to couple and build simulation capabilities that, that span this scale. This is especially important as there's more and more intermittent resources as these cause more and more variability and volatility in the markets and are causing uh, prevailing paradigms like levelized cost electricity that are really based in steady state or baseline power production to become obsolete. And what's happening is the economics of uh, the new technology heavily depend on the market. We want to be able to capture that and understand that. This talk is going to focus on real time and day ahead markets, where this, which is that this time scale here from like minutes to, to a day. So first I'll give some background, then I'll compare bidding and self-scheduling paradigms, and then I'll talk about co-simulation to understand these resource grid interactions. So um, energy markets are hierarchical. In California, there's three levels. There's a day ahead market, which sets hourly prices, and a 15 minute market, which sets 15 minute and five minute prices. If this wasn't complicated enough, these prices are actually set in, 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 in spatially distributed. So here's a snapshot of prices in California. Each dot is a node. Um, uh, prices vary by node. There's about 8,000 nodes in this picture. We can see from this time series that at the um, blue, the blue line, which is the day ahead market, that's fairly periodic. There's a lot of volatility in, in the red and the green, which are the real time market. When a resource decides to participate in the market, there's a lot of options. One could uh, transact energy. So this is either is consuming or a generator, and that's the day ahead market and the real time market. Or there's also these reserves and uh, regulation ancillary services. In general, the, the faster the time scale, the more economic opportunity. Uh, for the rest of this talk, we'll just focus on the energy markets. There's a lot of literature that also considers um, energy intensive uh, processes. Um, so one is scheduling with time varying prices. This is about a 20 year old problem. Um, and and there's, the consensus of the literature is there's about a five to 20% uh, increase in, in, in um, revenue or, or decrease in cost um, over steady state operation. Well, there's a lot of recent literature in the last five years then looking at extending this to ancillary services, and they find about 20% or more opportunities going beyond just, uh, just energy markets. And finally, I want to point out that Alcoa actually does this with their aluminum smelters, and they've um, publicly said they've this is participating in markets has reduced their energy costs by 10%. So hopefully you're convinced that there's a lot of opportunities um, coming from these multi-scale hierarchical energy markets, and this can really motivate a lot of good control research questions. Today I'm gonna talk about um, uncertainty and assumptions, especially this price taker assumption, which is that a, a resource is so small that its actions don't influence the market. And we'll talk about how to assess that. So in this first case study, we want to compare bidding and self-schedule, talk about how to formulate these, and, and um, talk about which approach is better. So before we can get into that, we kind of need to understand the steps for participating in the market. So it starts with a resource in the market making a forecast. And this is forecasting the price in the market or um, the, the load. So the, the market will, will, will forecast load and renewables. A resource then needs to ask if they're going to be Self-schedule or bidding, I'll talk about both of these in a minute. This is either going to result in a schedule where the resource is saying, I'm going to use this much power every hour, or a bid, which contains cost information. The market then clears by taking all of these bids or, or all of these self-schedules from every node that was shown in that California picture, and then trying to minimize the overall system cost subject to constraints for both individual resources and constraints for the overall system, so like the transmission network. This then gives uh, hourly schedules or set points for every resource and locational prices. Each resource then needs to track their signal from the market. Um, and then the actual plant outputs are then you know, observed by the market and that allows for payment to be calculated and the time step advances. Each uh, cycle through this loop is, is nominally one hour. And I want to point one out when I say resource, this is both thermal generators, some large scale renewables, 
some grid scale storage. So it, it's, a, it's a very general definition. For the probabilistic forecasting, which is step one, um, we've done some work with some Gaussian process models. These are nice because they have a predictive distribution. And we're also going to compare different ways of sampling these. So a Monte Carlo sampling, which is kind of like a statistically well-defined sample, and, and then some other techniques that, that are care less about statistical accuracy and, and more about just getting spread in these scenarios. So with these forecasts, a resource can either self-schedule or can bid. In the self-scheduling paradigm, the, the resource has these forecasts and then says, how should I operate to um, get the best revenue with, with this forecast for uncertainty? And then uh, the uh, resource just takes the market price. And this can be formulated as a multi-stage stochastic program. In contrast, in bidding, the resource actually tells the grid about its cost through a bid curve that looks like this. So it shows power here versus price. So this is um, how much power a, a generator is willing to produce as the price changes. And this you can calculate with a two-stage stochastic program. So notice that each um, time series forecast for price here uh, can correspond with a scenario, and you get one bid curve for every time step or one bid curve for every hour. Um, the optimization problems are shown here. The goal is to maximize uh, the expected value of revenue minus costs which can be approximated with scenarios. This is subject to market rules and some integer decisions and start down and shutdown constraints. Um, dynamics, ramping, and bounds. I want to just point out non-anticipativity. Um, for self-schedule, you could maybe enforce that the first four hours, the control actions across all schedules need to be the same. Um, for the bidding, non-anticipativity enforces that this is increasing. So now I want to talk about market clearing. And we're actually going to propose here a way to do this with historical price data, because the data needed to simulate a real grid, like all of California, that, that's protected data that um, is difficult to get access to. Um, so the way that this works is we have is inputs, uh, bid curve, and these historical prices. The first step is to then um, take the bid curve, look up the historical price. That gives these bounds on power. Those then, then enter into an optimization problem. The way to interpret this market clearing is what is the best schedule that maximizes revenue for the generator, but is constrained by their bid curve and the historical prices? So it's kind of like an upper bound, estimating upper bound on, on revenue, um, but using bidding. So let's see this in action, and we look at a combined cycle gas turbine example taken from literature. Here I'm going to compare uh, four, four, four ways of interacting with the market. First is perfect information. Blue here are power outputs. The solid black or the dashed black line is the actual market prices. This is the best the resource could do, but this requires knowledge of the future. Uh, static bidding is a bid curve that's just derived from steady state costs. Um, and uh, contour bidding, the, this, this, this is doing bidding, but with these contour samples, which are more spread out. And then Monte Carlo self-schedule is, is taking these Monte Carlo samples and doing self-schedule. But here, big takeaway message here is that there's a big um, error between the red line, which is the price forecast mean and the actual price. And with this error, the Monte Carlo, the self-schedule says, you know, the, the price is going to be so low, it's not worth my while. And the generator isn't turned on. But with bidding, it is turned on. And the, the idea is with self-schedule, the resource internalizes uncertainty. But with bidding, the resource communicates kind of like a resource policy, a recourse policy to the market. So bidding is more robust to price uncertainty. We also see this in rolling horizon uh, simulation results. We have a year of data from California market. Um, and shown here uh, with bidding, you can get 99% of the perfect information revenue. With self-schedule, we could only get 78%. So these results really show that if, if you're going to think about um, assessing the economics of an energy system, with historical data, we'd really advocate, under uncertainty, we'd really advocate for using bidding. Uh, next, we want to understand how do you capture these interactions between resources and grids in a real electric market. And here we're going to propose a, a more complicated workflow where there's two loops. One is for the day ahead market. One captures the real-time market. Stars are optimization problems that are solved by the resource. Pentagons are optimization problems solved by the grid. We're going to use Prescient, which is an open source cost production model. Prescient was very carefully designed to closely mimic um, real energy markets in the US. Um, and we're going to use the RTS GMLC uh, open source data set um, that roughly mimics the Southwest US. We're going to take one generator in the RTS GMLC test case, and now we're going to optimize its bidding. 
So the results shown here, um, on the left we have four bidding curves. The blue is the static curve, and then we have a bidding curve for uh, 5 p.m., 6 p.m., and 7 p.m. And the takeaway message is these bidding curves are very similar. If we inspect these schedules, we see that the schedules are very similar. Um, but when we apply this in a rolling horizon framework over four days um, to kind of demonstrate this workflow, uh, we see there's actually a 4% improvement in um, the optimal bidding. And this comes from an unexpected source. This comes because the optimized bidding is actually influencing market prices. So shown here is the histogram of prices with static bidding. Shown here is the same histogram with optimal bidding. And we see we go from two to three hours where the price spikes up to its upper bound in precedent. And what's happening with this extra price spike here is it's shifting the median and it's shifting the mean. And this big shift in the mean by about a factor of 10, that's what's driving that 4% increase in revenue. So our hypothesis is these small perturbations in the bid curve are causing the dispatch schedules to be slightly different. And this is causing some transmission constraint to be active, which is causing these price spikes. So the takeaway message is we have this new framework that allows us to couple really detailed process models um, and, and, and simulate how a resource would optimally bid into the market and couple that with actual simulation of the market. And we can do this in our rolling horizon framework. And this is starting to produce some evidence um, that uh, the price taker assumption is not always valid. So finally, I want to talk about the um, IDEAS project. Um, so as part of the IDEAS project, we've implemented um, this framework to uh, capture the resource grid interactions. There's another part of the IDEAS team that works on very detailed uh, dynamic modeling, um, optimization, and control of um, uh, uh, various energy systems, both thermal generators, new technologies, hybrid systems. Um, and this can also include uh, conceptual design and actually validation of these models. And what we want to do is couple these capabilities with the ability to simulate both uh, the grid, both expansion planning and the cost production model. And we want to have two new capabilities um, from the IDEAS project. The first is to be able to understand how changes of the dynamics at the detailed level. We're going to propagate through to the ability to track resources and how to bid and then market outcomes. And then also being able to take expansion planning results to understand what's, what's needed by the future electric grid under various renewable or, or CO2 policy scenarios and then be able to tie that to um, what types of energy systems are needed and what's the best way to design energy systems. With that, I'd like to um, acknowledge uh, all my collaborators on the IDEAS project. Um, everyone shown in blue is, is part of these grid modeling efforts. Um, and with that, I would be happy to answer questions.